Welcome to the VetVine iBuzz, Dr. Sherry Berger, buzzing on what's happening in the world of ophthalmology. This week I want to talk about a paper that appeared in JAVMA in June of 2014 titled Malassezia Species on the Periocular Skin of Dogs and Their Association with Blepharitis, Ocular Discharge, and the Application of Ophthalmic Medications. As a matter of background, recall that malassezia, which are very common, uh, are lipophilic yeasts, and they are commensal organisms on the skin and ears of dogs and um, other species. Previously published reports have told us, as we know, that this organism can be seen uh, by performing cytology. Uh, upwards to 40% of healthy ears uh, can show evidence of this organism on a cytologic exam, and upwards to 82% of diseased ears can show pre the presence of malassezia on cytology. The definitive way to diagnose uh, the, an infection is to culture it, and previously uh, reported um, studies have shown that in healthy normal dogs, uh, upwards to 61% of dogs can culture positive of the organism in the perianal area, 3% in the inguinal area, and 9% of normal healthy dogs may have a positive culture when the periocular skin is sampled. Um, in that same study, uh, in dogs that had pruritic skin lesions anywhere on the body, 44% uh, of those dogs cultured positive um, when the periocular skin was sampled. Uh, but typically we consider these opportunistic pathogens. So the objectives of the study were to determine the frequency for identifying malassezia species um, on cytology from the periocular skin of dogs and to see whether or not there were any associations between finding those organisms and whether or not those animals uh, also had evidence of blepharitis inocular discharge, and whether or not they had been treated with an, ophthalm an ophthalmic medication. Um, they wanted to further drill down and see whether or not there was an association between using an oil-based ophthalmic versus an aqueous uh, solution, um, as they theorized that uh, perhaps using an oil-based might uh, affect the lipid composition of the periocular skin and, and potentiate overgrowth. And they also wanted to look at the effect of immunosuppressant drugs like topical steroids and other immunomodulating agents like cyclosporin and tacrolimus to see if there was any effect. So they used 84 dogs, 167 eyelids, and they were evenly distributed in sex. Uh, medic, dogs that had received op ocular medications uh, had received those drugs for at least seven days and um, had not uh, had had medications applied uh, within 72 hours of um, sampling the periocular skin. Uh, the investigators used adhesive tape uh, to collect samples uh, from the periocular skin, and then those specimens were stained with a diff-quick stain and examined cytologically for the presence of malassezia species. Again, the animals were grouped, and it was determined whether or not they had blepharitis, inocular discharge, which was, was further characterized as serous, mucoid, or mucoprelent, and again, whether or not they had received uh, any type of ophthalmic medication. So the results of this study showed that um, just over 11% of the dogs did uh, demonstrate malassezia species in cytology of the periocular skin. Um, only four of them had evidence of blepharitis, but a majority of them, 14 out of the 19, had been treated with a topical ophthalmic medication. Um, specifically, dogs that received an aqueous-based uh, medication or a combination of an oil and aqueous-based medication had um, evidence of malassezia in their cytology um, evaluation. Um, the effect of immunosuppressants was not overwhelming. Uh, there was no significant association with the use of an immunosuppressive drug topically. Um, the other finding was that finding uh, malassezia species was more common in dogs that had an ocular discharge, um, specifically a mucoid or mucoprelent ocular discharge. So the conclusions of this study were that First, that using adhesive tape and staining it um, is a practical method for identifying malassezia species in the periocular skin of dogs. And upwards to 5% of clinically normal dogs without any other signs or um, did have evidence of malassezia on cytology. Um, there was a predominance of finding malassezia in dogs with a mucoid, mucoid or mucoprelent ocular discharge and in those that had been treated with a topical ophthalmic medication. So the takeaway 
from the study is that for dogs that develop a, a clinical um, blepharitis and or have a, a mucoid to mucoprelent discharge uh, during treatment with a topical ophthalmic, um, the clinician should consider assessing them uh, for the presence of malassezia by performing cytology as uh, this could impact the management um, of those patients. And with that, that's this week's VetLine iBuzz.